So I'm in Presov uh, in Slovakia, and this is one of the nicest museums I've seen simply because of the diversity of the, um, of the exhibits. I mean, I've, they're looking at a painting all the way over there. Um, but I wanted to talk about the, uh, the money. Um, a lot of people will go to a lot of museums and they will say, well, you know, what's, what's the point of seeing all these coins other than uh, understanding that gold and silver and, and so on were recognized as um, value of valuable items? Um, well, for one thing, you can see that, you know, everyone was trying to um, get their own uh, currency to be established and recognized. And that's a lot more difficult, um, even when you move from metal to paper. Uh, so, so one thing I look for is who's signing off on all these things. And you can see you've got a minister of finance down there. Um, and you can try to reverse engineer, um, you know, who that person was, what city that person was in. Um, because it's not quite so easy to come up with a printing press or a method of currency that is difficult to counterfeit. And that's precisely why these coins have been the standard for so long, because you had to come up with some, you know, silver, you had to mine it, uh, you had to mold it. And a lot of that was probably dealt with uh, in terms of a guild that happened to be dominant at that time. You've got your blacksmiths, you've got your shoemakers and so on. Uh, these are skilled professions. You couldn't just, you can't just make any of these things overnight. Um, and the other thing we want to look for is not just who's signing off on these things um, or whose faces are on the currency. Uh, what you also want to look for, um, you know, you've got faces on there. And unfortunately, I, you know, I don't speak, um, you know, Hungarian. But, you know, you can look at Magyar. That means Hungarian. And that you can sort of reverse engineer based on the date on who was here. Um, and that would be... You know, you, in many cases, it's, in Europe, it's going to be the, the Ottoman Empire, the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And of course, you know, Aust we tend to think of Austro-Hungarian as just Austria um, because of what happened later on. But the Hungarians, especially in Slovakia, had a lot of power. And they also have a lot of beautiful, 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 um, uh, you know, skilled workers that made a lot of interesting and colorful um, you know, cabinets and a lot of different things, um, if not just for marriage, uh, but just for everyday living, like stoves. They, most places you go to don't have, um, you know, anything other than a plain stove. Um, but the Hungarians had, you know, they put, they, they decorated their stoves and they made it very colorful. Um, but getting back to the money, um, you know, you've also got this sort of race for legitimacy. That reminds me of when Greece was trying to negotiate with the EU, um, and the, one, one of the objectives or one of the strategies that the nationalists in Greece were contemplating uh, was printing their own currency uh, in order to negotiate with the EU, um, despite, of course, you know the, the EU's objections. Um, that's all come to pass. But when you go to a museum and you look at these coins and you look at these currencies, they're all historical objects. Um, you can see uh, a lot of the history within uh, all these different coinage. Um, all the, you know, you've got, this is interesting. Um, you know, you've got so many different things here. Um, and so you've got, number one, you've got this idea, you know, if, if you're, if you see a face, typically it's going to be uh, a European or a Christian uh, currency. Uh, you can sort of remember that the, uh, the Jewish and the Muslim religions frowned upon um, depicting human beings, um, you know, in any sort of elevated or, um, or in, any, in any sort of uh, printing simply because not just a prophet, but just anybody simply because they were concerned about the idea that um, you know, when not, no, just like the Native Americans, that when you take a photograph of somebody or a person, you're sort of um, taking not just that person's, um, you're not just in a position where you can manipulate the person's image, um, but you're also taking a lot of different, um, you're, you're creating a lot of issues because you're, you've now um, sort of created a propaganda technique around that person. Uh, when in fact, what you're supposed to be doing is sort of thinking about things that are abstract that will last longer uh, than just one human being's life. Um, and so, of course, you've got um, a lot of religious uh, symbols. Um, and, you know, you, you can also look at the city. Uh, you know, what, what cities what cities had power? 
um, what cities did not have power because it's not just a situation where uh, you can print the money, you have to protect the money. Um, and it's not a coincidence, you know, that this is Bratislava, uh, and it's not a coincidence that this is still a major city uh, years after this uh, note was printed. A lot of times they actually put uh, not just faces, but fashion. Um, and so a lot of this, again, is not just to, to establish leg legitimacy. Um, a lot of artwork is funded uh, to uh, advance your language, your culture, um, and also the prestige of your city, because um, and in many cases, depending on you know, the, su the success of your city, oftentimes depended on the um, sort of benevolence of a foreign power. And so um, if you were well liked by the king in a foreign, well, not, well, in a different jurisdiction, uh, maybe you didn't have to pay taxes on the way, you know, when your products were shipped out um, of, your, of your local uh, area. Um, and, you know, maybe you got a different coat of armor, um, uh, coat of arms. Uh, maybe, you know, it's just like something similar today, right? Tariffs, uh, taxes, they've always been around. Um, weapons, they've always been around. Um, and this is, this, by the way, is a stove. It's, it's what, what I was talking about when I talked about, um, and this is actually one of the more um, low-key stoves. Uh, and that's how people had heating back in the day. You would open that up, and that's where your heat would come from. And I imagine you would put wood. Um, I'm not an expert on this, but I imagine you would put wood or some other kind of kindling um, in there to make it work. Um, and so ultimately, the legitimacy of governments, and not just of governments, but of any major, major, major entity, a lot of it is linked to the development of uh, culture, which involves art, books, um, you know, the art at the time might have been clocks, it might have been fashion, um, the guilds multiplied uh, over time, and, you know, you, you, we take it for granted to let you know that if you're in Europe or let's, let's take an easy example, the United States, that when you, you, know, you take out this piece of paper and it's currency, you accept it. You don't think that it's something that's anything other than what it is. But in reality, you go all the way back. It, it's throughout history. The reason that you're able to think of that piece of currency as something um, that represents something else it's not is a, a complicated, interesting story behind it. Um, and the funny thing is it hasn't changed. Uh, you notice that even a few hundred years ago, we were still using paper. Um, and so the question is, is it going to change in the future? Um, I'm not sure. But, you know, when you exchange your currency uh, somewhere in the world and you look at it, just take a look at it. You know, it's got somebody's name on it. It's got, you know, the, probably a the location. All of that will give you a clue as to where the power is uh, within that country and also what that country is trying to project in terms of legitimacy, in terms of what they stand for. Is it a picture of a person? Um, is it a picture of a location? Uh, what, is, what kind of values uh, are these, you know, are the printers or the governments attempting to propagate uh, in their quest for legitimacy? and to make sure that when you exchange that piece of paper, even if it's for a different piece of paper, that, you're not, that you don't think twice. Um, that, that that's just what, that's exactly what you think a store of value is. And of course, a painting can be a store of value also. Uh, a lot of the things that are valuable, they have some link to the past. And so it's going to be very interesting to see what happens in the future. But if you get a chance to come and you come to Slovakia, I highly recommend this museum in Presov.